Hey Vsauce, Jack here, and today we're talking about the Alka-Seltzer Lava Lamp Lab using compounds and molecules. So for starters, this is a mixture. Whoop. There you go. That um, blank slide there. Um, none of this is a pure substance. Everything is made of pure substance together to create these compounds. So, you know, everything has kind of a different a different, uh, you know, kind of, kind of combination, right? I mean, specific reactions. This is not um, just pure substances, pure elements. Um, it would have to be an element on the periodic table to be pure substances. But, you know, oil, water, none of that, those aren't elements. Those are made of other elements. Even water is H2O. It's still a reaction. So let's quickly review. So here we've got the food coloring. We've got the water bottle, we've got the Alka-Seltzer, we've got the oil, and we've got the water. When the Alka-Seltzer is dropped in, by the way, the food coloring goes in before any of this. But then the Alka-Seltzer is dropped in, and the food coloring creates that kind of wall around the bubbles that makes it rise because it is so hollow. Then it falls when it hits the top right here, and it goes back down. And of course that reaction, that kind of middle ground that we see, all the different bubbles, that is of course what we call the lava lamp and that's essentially which is again weird to think about it's less dense than the water so yeah water such a um kind of viscous you know, thick liquid like ketchup so you wouldn't really think it's less dense but it is under the oil creating a suspension hey vsauce jack here and in today's video we are talking about the Alka-Seltzer Lava Lamp Lab using compounds and molecules. So this, what you're looking at right now, is the lab itself. This is a mixture. It's heterogeneous, meaning it's not combined. Um, the water and food coloring does create a homogeneous mixture, but this is a heterogeneous mixture. You can tell it's not combined because the oil has risen above. And the reason for that um, is because the oil is actually less dense than the water, which is weird to think about because the and that's kind of the uh, kind of the preface and little kind of side note that I just wanted to make sure I got out of the way. Um, in fact, actually, all of these happen to be compounds, but, you know, that's just a specific type of molecule. So the food coloring plus the water, as I talked about, does make a homogeneous mixture, but again, that, um, that is the only food coloring, and that creates the homogeneous mixture, and you actually such a, um, sorry about that, because the oil genius mixture. So here's how it all went down. You know this. You put in the water, you put in the oil, creating a suspension because the oil is less dense. You know, same reason a boat floats above the water, no reason a rock wouldn't. And the oil and water are solvents. Then color is added of the alka seltzer and it creates that lava lamp reaction that we all know and love. But why? Well, first, the alka seltzer is dissolving in the water to create this. Um, it's a solute that's dissolving in a solvent, the water. Because Alka-Seltzer is used for calming else acids, made to be very reactive Alka-Seltzer. You know, these are all just kind of random elements, etc., etc., that creates these because of its specific chemical properties. In it, it's got carbon coals, uh, excuse me, elements like carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, and some of the most reactive metals on the periodic table of elements. Again, um, different variations of Alka-Seltzer could have different um, ions uh, and different, excuse me, different isotopes and different ions of each of these, um, of each of these elements. The, uh, the stylus isn't really working. Um, so it creates these bubbles. And the reason it creates the bubbles is because of that fizz. But the reason the bubbles rise is because we talked about earlier, um, you know, the gas and the bubbles, etc., etc. That is basically why the lava lamp kind of happens. That's why the lava lamp is, this is the food coloring actually makes a little coat around the bubble. And that makes the bubble less dense. This area here, right here in between, that's all less coat that is created by the food coloring. So, you know, oil and water, they're both pretty um, not, not so dense. But the bubbles are even less dense. They're practically hollow. They are bubbles. There's nothing inside. And the reason they create these bubbles is, again, because of the coat created by the food coloring. Just like that. So it rises because it is um, less dense than both the oil and the water. It goes to the top coloring coating, kind of pops, and it goes down again. Once it hits, you know, the very top, 
it goes down. Bubbles, when it hits the top, it kind of pops just like that, and it kind of goes back down. The bubbles head back down, and it goes back down the bottom, and it kind of creates that little lamp reaction that we all know and love. That's what this rising and falling um, kind of happens. And this is actually using, you know, all three states of matter. It's got solids, gases, and of course the liquids, which are oil and water. And because of all of these specific properties created, and it's why we have that specific... That is essentially how this works. Um, because of the specific compounds that make up all of these things, that is why the specific reaction happens with, um, with um, the Alka-Seltzer, because it's so reactive. So that's pretty much it. You can pretty much get it. Hope this was entertaining, informational. Thank you so much for watching. Fun, thank you so much for watching with Vsauce. I'll see you guys next time. I'm Jack. Peace out. And as always, thanks for watching.